intro get set go level one six and one lesson 16 story telling story three failing both hello everyone greetings this is Aisha Siddika hope you are bright and shiny I'm also doing great so today I want to tell you a story called failing both so let's begin let me share someone's life history with you this was a man who failed in business at the age of 21 was defeated in a legislative race at age 22 failed again in business at age 24 overcame the death of his sweetheart at age 26 had a nervous breakdown at age 27 lost a congressional race at age 34 lost a senatorial race at age 45 failed in an effort to become vice president at age 47 lost a senatorial race at age 49 and was elected president of the United States at age 52 this man was Abraham Lincoln hope you liked my story next time I'll tell you another beautiful story till then Allah Hafiz Story 4 Stupid Edison Hello everyone, greetings. This is Aisha Siddika. Hope you are bright and shiny. I'm also doing great. Today I want to tell you a story called Stupid Edison. So let's begin. One day a partially deaf four-year-old kid came home with a note in his pocket from his teacher. Your Tommy is too stupid to learn. Get him out of the school. His mother read the note and answered, My Tommy is not stupid to learn. I'll teach him myself. And that Tommy grew up to be the great Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison had only three months of formal schooling and he was partially deaf. Hope you all liked my story. Next time, I'll tell you another beautiful story. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Story 5 Secret to Success Hello everyone, greetings. This is Aisha Siddiqui. Hope you are bright and shiny. I'm also doing great. Today, I want to tell you a story called Secret to Success. So let's begin. A young man asked Socrates the secret to success. Socrates told the young man to meet him near the river the next morning. They met. Socrates asked the young man to walk with him towards the river. When the water got up to their neck, Socrates took the young man by surprise and ducked him into the water. The boy struggled to get out, but Socrates was strong and kept him there until the boy started turning blue. Socrates pulled his dead, pulled his head out of the water, and the first thing the young man did was to gasp and take a deep breath of air. Socrates asked, What did you want the most when you were there? The boy replied, Air. Socrates said, That is the secret to success. If you want success as badly as you wanted the air, then you'll get it. There's no other secret. A burning desire is the starting point of all accomplishment. Just like a small fire cannot give much heat. A weak desire 
cannot produce great results. Hope you liked my story. Next time, I'll tell you another beautiful story. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Story six: Attitude. Hello, everyone. Greetings. This is Aisha Siddiqui. Hope you are bright and shiny. I'm also doing great. Today, I want to tell you a story called Attitude. So let's begin. Three people were laying bricks, and a passerby asked them what they were doing. The first one replied, "Don't you see I'm making a living?" The second one said, "Don't you see I'm laying bricks?" The third one said, "I'm building a beautiful moment." Three people doing the same thing gave totally different replies. The question is, did they have different attitudes, and would their attitude affect their performance? The answer is a clear yes. Hope you liked my story. Next time. I'll tell you another beautiful story. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Story seven, highest contribution. Hello, everyone. Greetings. This is Aisha Siddiqui. Hope you are bright and shiny. I'm also doing great. Today, I want to tell you a story called Highest Contribution. So let's begin. There is a story about a king in ancient times who wanted to honor a person that made the greatest contribution to society. All kinds of people came, including doctors and entrepreneurs, and they all presented their case for receiving the honor. The king wasn't impressed. Finally, an elderly person with a glow on his face walked in and said he was a teacher. The king came down from his throne and bowed to honor the teacher. It is the teacher who makes the highest contribution in shaping the future of the city. Hope you all liked my story. Next time, I'll tell. You another beautiful story. Till then, Allah Hafiz. Story eight: No free lunch. Hello, everyone. Greetings. This is Aisha Siddiqui. Hope you're bright and shiny. I'm also doing great. Today, I want to tell you a story called No Free Lunch. So let's begin. There is a story about a king who called his advisers and asked them to write down the wisdom of the ages, so that. He could pass it on to future generations. After a lot of work, the advisers came up with several volumes of wisdom and presented them to the king. The king called his advisers and said that it was too long; people would not read it. They had to condense it. The advisers went back to work and came back with one volume. The king said the same thing. They came back again with one chapter. And then one page, and the king said the same thing. Still, until they came up with one sentence that satisfied the king, he said that if there was one piece of wisdom that he wanted to pass on to future generations, it is this one sentence: "There is no free lunch." In every organization or society, there are freeloaders. They are people who want to get a benefit without paying for it. They are looking for freebies. By and large, sometime or the other, most of us have been guilty of being a freeloader. This is typically seen in associations and organizations. Most members are inactive. They want and get the full benefit of the effort of the active ones. Hope you all liked my story. Next time, I'll tell you another beautiful story. Till then. Allah Hafiz.